filming this? Yes, I am. <laughs> so you can see how non-artistic I am. Oh! It was pretty for a second. It does take years and years and years of practice to get it right. Don't tell me that. I like to be good at things from the start. Oh, uh, that's too bad. <laughs> All right. Stay. So, tell me what's hard about this. Patience. <laughs> <laughs> Patience. And, and the artistic like... aspect of it. Oh, it looks, looks pretty good. Just a little bit... That. Up a little bit more, yeah. And here's mine. I did a bigger one. Bigger ones are easier. There. <laughs> Jess, why don't you talk us through the steps that you go through to mount your butterflies to be able to observe them. All right, so I've got this one in, we've preserved them in the envelope when okay. we catch them, and that keeps them nice and clean and keeps their the scales of their wings from rubbing off. So I'm going to take it with my forceps right here and squeeze it just a little bit so that Swings open up. Cut. And I'm going to put the pin right through the middle. As close to the middle and perpendicular to the body as possible. And that's just to move the pin down further on the butterfly. Mm hmm. And if I use the pinning block, then they will all be more or less even. Gotcha. Right. Oh, so that's why mine aren't. Awesome. <laughs> this is my pinning board, and as you see, I've already done a couple of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put it right in the middle and push it down to where the wing joints are. Okay. And these wings... It's a very high-tech <laughs> process. And you can edit it later. So, I'm going to find the veins, okay? The very heavy veins on the wings so that I can pull on them and spread out the wings. And not break them? Not break them. That's right. I may end up breaking it, but that happens sometimes. I'm going to try not to, though. But these are locals. And these are locals. I don't worry too much about messing up with them, even though I, I really try to do my best. If I'm working with Chilean specimens or something that's been sent to me from another country, I want to be even more careful because I can't just go out and right. go out and get them. And do my best to stabilize the wing. Move it just a little bit at a time. And your tools, they're pins. These are the pins. These are just sewing pins. These right here. These are insect pins. Very flexible, lightweight insect pins. Okay. And, um... These are old envelopes that we've cut up to position the wings. And this is a spreading board um, that you can buy through biological supply companies. But you can also make one. There are plans online hmm. for, for you to make one, but I like these much better. They're made out of foam and balsa wood, basically. All right, and I always do the left side first and then the right side because I'm right-handed. Makes sense. And if I do the right side first, then I bump into the pins when I'm trying to position the left side. Mm 
I'm just moving it little by little. And this takes years and years of practice to be able to do well. You want it to be as symmetrical as possible. And your aim is both to make it look pretty and to make it so that you can see all of the characters on the wings. pretty close to done. It's good enough. Let's have a look. Looks pretty good to me with my expert eye. We're gonna go across the hall to gather specimen trays. And I've got several drawers that I'm working on. Here's one of them. They're cool. They're just little brown guys. Not terribly exciting but I think they're interesting. And Some these are all, and these are from Chile. Those were cool. in Chile. And these are one of my favorite ones. They're called Argaraphrus argentius. And the common pretty. name is the silver cider. And they really are silver, like seriously silver. You can probably see it a little bit. They are. Maybe it's a little bit glaring, but. And let's see. I'm gonna take this one. Here's Dr. Brower, Jess's major professor. <laughs> and here you see where I've arranged them into groups so that I can separate which ones are the same and which ones are different for my cladistic analysis. Cool. And that's a really big and fancy way of saying that I'm going to arrange them into groups. <laughs> and we'll see. Back across the hall, right here, is, let me start at the top, my, this is one of my preliminary trees. Holy Moses. It's just a tad bit of work. Just a little bit. And so I'm trying to determine which groups are good groups, which species are good species, and which are not, that I can combine into one species or split up into two or more species. Um, and it's a very, very long and involved process. A lot of tedium, but I think it's fun. Really? <laughs> I like playing with data. I like um, finding information and manipulating it and arranging things into groups. 